Good afternoon, and welcome to Simply Psychology. Today's guest is world-renowned Ulrich Neiser, father of cognitive psychology. Thank you, Nick, for having me on your show today. Oh, glad you're here. Now, Dr. Neiser, please tell our viewers what cognitive psychology really is. Well, cognitive psychology is the study of how people perceive, remember, think, speak, and solve problems. Very interesting. Very interesting stuff. Please tell us about the study of how people think. Well, Nick, I'm glad you asked that. There are three, three building blocks of thought. The first is language. Of course. Obviously. Language involves communicating through the use of... Language involves communicating through the use of symbols, sounds, or gestures to convey information. The second block is images. Images are mental representations of an experience. The third block is concepts. Concepts are categories. Concepts are categories for classifying objects, people, or experiences based upon common features. The three building blocks of thought collectively form the building blocks of language. So, Dr. Neiser, yes. how is it we go about understanding language? Well, a possible way to begin, Nick, is to understand language is to understand its basic structure. Hmm. Two components of language are phonemes and morphemes. Phonemes are a unit of sound. So, like, t and th and s and sh, right? Yes. A morpheme is a combination of sounds having a meaning, but isn't necessarily a word. Well, Nick, the rules that determine the meaning and form of words and sentences is called grammar. Grammar is comprised of two components, syntax and semantics. Syntax is the grammatical rules for specifying correct word order to make phrases and sentences. Semantics are the gram grammatical rules for assigning meaning to morphemes, words, and phra or phrases. I see. Syntax concerns what is linguistically and grammatically correct, whereas semantics requires a person's prior knowledge. Very good. Now, when we put a string of words together, we form a sentence. Are, are there different types of sentences? As a matter of fact, Nick, there are. The first type is a surface structure. Surface structure is a sentence in the form that is heard and spoken and is based upon syntax. Deep structure is underlying meaning and is based upon semantics. Now, Dr. Neiser, you mentioned that images are one of the building blocks of thought. What role do yes. images play in thinking? Well, images are mental representations of sensory experiences. Visual images, in particular, can be powerful aids in thinking about relationships between things. Picturing things in our mind's eye can sometimes help us solve problems. How do concepts help us think more eff efficiently? Concepts are categories for classifying objects, people, and experiences. Like you and I. Yes, yes, yes. Precisely. Based on their common elements. Of course, obviously. Right, of course, of course. Without the ability to form concepts, we would need a different name for every new thing we encountered. Hmm. See? Yeah, very, very perplexing. Concepts also help clarify new experiences, as we can draw on them to anticipate what new experiences will be like. Now, what is the relationship between images and concepts? When thinking of an image, you usually, you usually use concepts to help you think more efficiently, and you also apply concepts such as white, furry, soft, to produ produce an image of a bunny. Yes. Yeah. Calm down. Are all concepts so clearly defined? Oh, no, 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 Nick. Mm, so Overlapping, no. poorly defined ideas are called fuzzy concepts. Mm, interesting. A good example of this would be a rat and a mouse. This example is a fuzzy concept because the differences in each are, are difficult to point out. 
When forming a concept, a person will construct a prototype or model representing a mouse and a different model representing a rat. Human cognition, then, involves more than just thinking about things. It involves words, images, and concepts in developing an understanding of the world. Precisely. Thank you, Dr. Neiser. For the interesting insight into the thought of language, join us next time when our guest on Simply Psychology will be Dr. Carl Young. Thanks again. Thanks again. Thank you.